page 118. You don't think it's about us, Henry asked. I could be the master of the box. It's in my room. Henrietta raised her eyebrow and looked at him. What? Henry asked. It's in our house, she said. Yeah? You're not the master of anything, Henry. She looked down at the letter. And it wouldn't matter if you were. This is total gibberish. Whoever the master of the box is, he's supposed to wake up the daughter of a second sire. A sire is a king, right? Do you know any kings, Henry? Maybe, Henry said, stirring his cereal. You wouldn't know. Henrietta laughed. Right. I'm going to open up the other one. Open the other one. She picked up the square envelope and turned it over so the seal was up. The green glob shone like light in the green glob shone in the light like glass. It had been stamped with a sonnet, and the thick lip bulged up around the image of a man's head. He was bearded, and his eyes were blank, pupilless. Leaves grew in his beard and out of his nose and mouth. Vines crawled from his ears and were wrapped around his forehead like a crown. That's a little creepy, Henrietta said. She tried to slide her finger along the paper to pop the seal off, but it wouldn't budge. She tried to tear the paper, but it couldn't so much as wrinkle it. Page 119. She dropped the envelope on the table and stood up. <clears throat> I'm getting scissors, she said. Henry shifted in his seat. Don't bother, he said. They won't work. He looked up at her. It's just like grandfather's door. You won't be able to get it open. He took the envelope in his hands and ran his fingers over the paper. I'm still getting scissors. Henrietta turned away. She didn't take a step. A pop, like a sound of a knuckle cracking, had come from behind her. She turned around. What was that? she asked. Um, Henry said. I touched the seal. What? The seal. On the letter. I touched it. Henry pointed towards the table. The seal had divided through the green man's forehead, around his nose, and down through his beard. It's broken, Henrietta said, split right in half. She picked up the envelope and tried to open it. The paper wouldn't move. I think it's for me, Henry said. Henrietta looked at him, looked at the seal, and then handed him the envelope. It was all one piece of thick paper, not an envelope at all, and it unfolded easily in Henry's hands. He held the paper out. Do you want to see two? he asked. Page 120. Read it aloud, Henrietta said, dropping back into a chair. Her hand snuck up to her mouth and she began chewing on her thumbnail. Henry looked over the paper, more than a little surprised at what he saw. The writing wasn't writing at all. It had been typed, and, and typed on what looked to be a very old typewriter. Every T and K stuck out high. It was much easier to read than the other letter. Issuance from the Central Committee of Farron for the Prevention of Mishap, District RRK. Composed and adopted under emergency guidelines, Book of Farron, 6, 3. Delivered via the island hill of Badan, Chapter District AP. To whom we may concern, Testimony has been presented in the hill of the Farron District RRK regarding certain gates that were once created without authority and were frivolously exploited to the great detriment of five of our most ancient districts and two civilizations. Said gates were believed to have been destroyed and or perhaps severed or sealed. Said testimony in said of hill aforementioned district established the following. A that the gates had either not been destroyed, nor severed, nor sealed, or that the gates had been destroyed, or severed, or sealed, but had been rebuilt, repaired, or opened. B. That beside said gate sleeps a male child, timid in all habit, who both snoreth and whimpereth in his slumber, henceforth whimpering child. C. That whimpering child is reprehensible, and a shame to all who pursue wisdom or have earned gray hairs or fleshy scars struggling to prevent mishap in the service of this district, past, present, and future. Having found the testimony sound, 
the Central Committee of Farron for the Prevention of Mishap, District RRK, issue the following notification to be delivered by members of the Island Hill of Badon Chapter District AP who provided above testimony. That if whimpering child through ignorant or malice meddling shall unearth, unbind, or release evils long defeated, or evils young and undefeated, he shall be deemed fully responsible by the CCF MP of this district and be destroyed forthwith. Let whimpering child beware. When the seal has been broken, notice shall be considered given. Notice has been given. Ralph Raldolf, Chair CCFPM, District RRK, C and A under EG per BF, V, I'm at six, three. Henry looked up at his cousin. Someone knows I found the cupboards. You don't know that, Henrietta said. Page 123. It doesn't have to be about you, she forced a smile. You do whimper, though. I don't think it's funny, Henry said. Somebody's been watching me. That's freaky. Henrietta shrugged, but she slipped her thumbnail back between her teeth. Henry ate a cereal, and the two hurried back upstairs. They tore down the poster wallpaper and stood by his bed, at, staring at the doors. The doors stared back. I want to look in the little mailbox first, Henrietta said, but then I think we should just bang on them and see if they're stuck like the first one was. Henry gave Henrietta the key to the mailbox. She pushed her hand out of her face and hunkered down so she could unlock, unlock the box and look through the little black space. Henry stood beside his bed and used the butt end of the chisel to wrap on all the metal latches and slides. Are you sure it was yellow in here? Henrietta asked. Yes but I think it might be different time zone. That's why it's dark now. Henrietta sat up. I'm gonna come watch with you tonight. I hope Anastasia and Penelope sleep hard. Have you tried all the ones near the floor? I wanna see those. Let's pull back the bed. Page 124. Henry got off the bed and the two of them pulled it as far away from the wall as they could, which was only about a foot and a half. Henrietta pulled a rubber band out of her pocket and began twisting her hair back into a ponytail. I like that one by the floor, she said, the black one. The door was about nine inches square and extremely dark. The dust from the plaster stood out against it like chalk on a blackboard. Are you sure? You don't think it looks sad? No, it looks magic, but it's black. Henrietta smiled. That's why it looks magic. It's more ebony anyway. That's a nicer black. Henry looked at the black cupboard more closely. For some reason, he had avoided looking at it before. Of course it had been late, and he had been tired when he first chipped the plaster off, but he hadn't really liked it then, moving on quickly and not looking back. He didn't know why. Did you try it? Henrietta asked. Now that she'd asked, Henry knew he hadn't. I don't remember. Henrietta looked at, looked at him. We'll try it now. Henry didn't want to. In the center of the door was a very small metal knob. He reached down and felt it. It was cold. He tried to turn it. It won't turn, he said, and stood back up. Page 124. Is it supposed to? Henrietta asked. She squeezed past Henry, draped herself over the bed, gripped the small knob, and pulled. The door came off in her hand. A gold chain attached to the back rattled out behind the door. Henrietta looked surprised. I got it open, she said. Henry desperately wanted to leave the room. I don't think it's a good door at all, he whispered. A lump was forming in his gut. I think I'm going to be sick. Henrietta wasn't listening. With her other hand, she pulled on the chain. It's attached inside the cupboard, she said. The whole thing just comes off and sticks back on. Oh, look at this. She slid further off the bed and reached into the dark opening. Henry threw up on the floor beside the cupboards. Then he passed out. When he came to, he felt much better. Henrietta was sitting on the bed looking down at him. Are you okay? She asked. You threw up on the floor. I dropped an old towel over it. You can clean it up later. I don't like that cupboard, Henry said. He was between his bed and the cupboard wall. He didn't try to sit up. It made me sick. Did I pass out? Page 126. Yeah, you were still breathing, so I wasn't worried. Anastasia used to hold her breath until she passed out all the time. 
Did you close the cupboard? Yes. I don't think it was the cupboard, though. I still like it. Look what was inside. She held up a key. It was much bigger than the last one and older, too. A skeleton key. I think it may be the key to Grandfather's bedroom. Dad has other keys like it, and they look like this. I waited for you to wake up to try it. Henry propped himself up. A ratty green, green towel sat in a lump at his feet. But why would Grandfather's key be in there? He asked. The doors were plastered way too long ago. You'd remember it if it had only been two years. Could be more than one key, plus the magic cupboards. If you can see a mailman's face in your wall, then I don't think a key is a big deal. I don't think the key will work. I think something is keeping it shut. Well, let's try. Henrietta stood up. Henry stood up after her, wondering if he'd be sick again. He looked back at the towel. It's just a little puke, and a towel kind of hides the smell, Henrietta said. Come on. The two of them pushed the bed out of the way and then walked down the attic stairs and around the landing. They stepped over the hole in the floor and tangled a shredded carpet and stood before the old and new defaced door. You do it, Henrietta said and held out the key. You found it. Yeah, but I want you to do it. Why? I don't know, she said. I think you should. Henry took the key and found the hole in the wood, which had once been protected by a brass cover plate. He stuck the key in and twisted. It caught on something and then clicked. He stepped back. There's not a knob, he said. Push it. Henry reached out and touched the mulched surface of the door. He pushed. The door swung wide open without a sound. Oh my goodness, Henrietta said. The two of them peered in. A large bed was made. A clock on the nightstand ticked beside an open book, face down to save someone's place. Behind that was a clear glass vase with fresh flowers. One of the windows was open, and the curtain ghosted in the breeze. Are they fake? Henrietta asked. What? Page 128. She pointed. The flowers in the vase by the bed. Doesn't look like it. There's water in the vase. Henry stepped forward. Don't go in, Henry, Henrietta said. Why? There shouldn't be flowers. Grandfather died two years ago, and the door's been locked the whole time. There shouldn't be flowers, and look, the window's open. The window isn't supposed to be open. It's always shut from the outside. Henry looked around the room. The flowers have some brown spots, but they're not dry. And where's the dust? Henrietta leaned into the doorway, nervously pulling at her ponytail. Grandfather? She asked. Are you there? She stepped back on the landing. I think we should go in, Henry said. Henrietta didn't answer. Henry stepped across the threshold. He looked around. Anything? Henrietta asked. He's not here, Henry said. Just a lot of books. Look behind the door, Henrietta said. She was biting a nail. Henry did and found a purple robe hanging on a peg. He stood very still, staring at it. What? Henrietta asked. What's back there? Page 129. I've seen... Henry began, but a wall went up in his mind. The robe was just purple and dirty and long, irritated. Henry reached out and clenched a fabric in a fist. He threw himself against the block in his mind. Henrietta stepped into the room and looked at him. Her face was worried. Henry, are you okay? Henry, she asked, are you okay? Henry let go of the robe. He licked his lip. Was grandfather short? He asked. I had a dream, maybe, where someone was wearing this purple thing, a short old man coming out of the bathroom. Henrietta stared at him. Grandfather was tall, really tall. You saw someone in the bathroom? I don't know, Henry said. Maybe not, but I've got a picture of him in my head. I don't know why. Henry walked to the bed, looked out the window. Henrietta walked to the bed, looked out the window, crossed her arms, and shivered. This is weirding me out, Henry. Henry picked up the book on the nightstand and turned it over. 
It's a journal. Henry looked at him. Grandfather's journal? It's full. It looks like he was just reading it. I don't think he was. Dad says he was reading him a book about an old war when he died. Somebody else must be reading it. Page 130. Who? Henry asked. She looked right at Henry, her eyes wide. Who'd you see in the bathroom? I don't know. She shivered again and rubbed her arms. Henry looked back at the purple robe on the door and then down at the journal. He began reading. Henrietta, he said. This is about the cupboards. What? She looked over her shoulder. The page on the right was covered with a drawing. The ink was blotchy, but there was no doubt about what it was. It was Henry's cupboard wall. There was an outline for every cupboard door, and in the middle of all but one was a number. The page on the left had two columns of numbers, 1 to 98.